Hi everyone. The disbanding of Team Anna yesterday and the entire India Against Corruption movement is a very distressing and sobering moment for all of us, and it is a great loss for everybody. Tehelka has been very critical of Team Anna from almost day one for various reasons. We have felt that the tonality of this movement was wrong, that it positioned itself as anti-politics, it was partisan, it depended too much on spectacle, less on substance, it, it drew its strength too much from television coverage rather than a patient building of movement on ground. We felt that it was too maximalist, you know, it, it promised too much, it was over ambitious, it made false promises uh, by claiming that a Lokpal bill would, you know, correct uh, corruption or, or control corruption 80% overnight. It dumbed down very complex issues. It did not allow for space for disagreement and dissent, which is a very, very important part of democratic societies. And it promised a magic wand. It promised that all virtue, you know, it, it did not demand introspection. It assumed that all corruption lay outside of itself, only in the political domain. It did not introspect on the nature of corruption in our society, of where it stems from each one of us, of how corporates are colluding in that, and of how politicians drawn from this society ha have become very much a part of a, a generic, uh, you know, sort of impulse towards corruption. It did not speak of any of these complex issues. It wanted to just make corruption something simplistic that could lie outside of ourselves and be changed overnight. It did not seek to change the nature of power. It wanted to just shift the location of it. It wanted to centralize it into one institution. And in this impatience to fix a society, it was willing to compromise on some principles of democracy. For all these reasons, we have been critical of Team Anna. Why then do I say that their disbanding is a loss for us all? The reason I say this is because despite whatever their failings have been, they brought a kind of white-hot urgency to corruption, to the issue of corruption that almost no one else has in recent history. Not only that, their loss, their disbanding, in a sense, erodes the position of civil society movements uh, across, the, uh, across the nation. Because they had captured people's imagination, it was their moral duty to stay the course, to build slowly, to be patient, to mature their rhetoric, so that over time, that which they had promised would be achieved. It is important when you are given the kind of national attention that they were given, to win the victory, to win the battle, even if it takes longer, even if it means moderating and tempering oneself, it is important to last the course. The fact that they grew so impatient and gave up their goal, all of last year we were told that Jan Lokpal was the one instrument that would fix everything in our democracy. Within a year, when it didn't happen, the group seems to have lost faith in their own movement and decided to jump ship. They now say that it's not the Lokpal, but it's total revolution. What you couldn't do in one year, you will do in three years. In all these ways, they are compromising the efficacy of civil movements, the place of civil movements in our society. All of last year, the rhetoric was that this was India's Arab Spring, that this was India's second independence movement. This kind of overblown rhetoric has been very, very problematic because the point everyone was miss missing was that we are a functioning democracy. We are faltering in many ways, but we are a democracy and protest movements can improve upon systems. They cannot overthrow it. We are not a dictatorship and we are having an adversarial conversation with elected representatives. But the issue of who speaks the voice of the people is a very difficult one in our democracy. And Team Anna aggrandized that voice too much for themselves. For all these reasons, they have compromised us. And yet, they were an important pressure group. They were an important moral pressure group. And that is why their disbanding is such a loss. If their disbanding becomes a signal to the political class that they can be emboldened in their brazenness, in their apathy, in their disinterest in fixing things, you know, the loss will be trebled and doubled. One can only hope and urge the political establishment to take its learnings from the high drama of the last year and a half and be sober enough to go through with its own promises. Just, Justice Santosh Hegde, who has been part of the Team Anna group, said that the Lokpal bill that is now in Parliament, uh, under consideration in Parliament, 
is something that they can live with, although it's 70 percent of what they wanted, it should be passed and then one can build on it brick on brick and improve upon it. I really hope that the political establishment will stop gloating over the fact that Team Anna has fallen apart and will keep their promises. But there's another reason why I say that the disbanding of Team Anna is so problematic. The reason is the decision of floating a political party which has uh, fractured the team. This decision is a very complex one and it has many complex messages. Many people are very disappointed that Team Anna has done this. The disappointment stems from many reasons. One believes that they're doomed to fail, that no group of well-meaning citizens can float a political party and make any dent because the whole political machinery in our country is very complex. But it is still important to remember and for that I personally am grateful that they've taken this decision because it is important even symbolically to remind ourselves that we should not be outlawing politics and politicians. We should be creating an atmosphere where more and more good people join the system so that incrementally things will improve. Incrementally the desire and the intent within political establishments will improve and some uh, regaining of idealism will come back into the system. But at another level, the fact that they took this decision is very ironic and it is something that we must uh, understand. All of last year, particularly Arvind Kejriwal and Prashant Bhushan spoke a language that was very anti-politics and anti-politician. They did not look into uh, corporate corruption, into individual corruption. All of it was anti-politics. It is heartening in a sense that today they have come full circle and understood that the true agency in a democracy is through electoral politics. That it is only when you join the system and you sweat it and you, you bear the pain of it that you earn the legitimacy to have a voice that can change it. And you, you, you must try and change the system from within. That is the great dilemma of Indian politics. That that is where real power lies. That is where the real domain of ethics should lie. That is where one person's decision can impact millions of lives. And yet, because of the way Indian politics is constructed today, even if good people join it, you're almost enforced to move away from idealism. So it's important that they've done this. And yet, just to reiterate the point I was making, the reason why it has fractured the team is because it was not done consensually, it was not done democratically, it was not done with a great degree of agreement between the team. Many people who have been part of this movement feel disillusioned because although there has been a lot of criticism of the government, within the movement itself, there hasn't been even something as small as a protest movement. There hasn't been that capacity to build genuine consensus and genuine conversation. And finally, it is a pity that they took the decision to join politics rather than stay with the movement and build brick on brick because the other ironic message from all of this is that even if you don't join politics, you can impact on politics. You can create pressure on politics as many, many other civil movements have done by merely sticking to one's goals and speaking a language that is of a higher moral tone, that is less uh, uh, you know, vindictive, less accusatory than what we expect of the political establishment. Unfortunately, the Team Anna movement mirrored too much that which they were criticizing and the fact that they did not last the course and change that and mature that is a big big loss. Ultimately if there's one sobering message that all of us can take from this debacle and when I say all of us I mean whether it's the media, whether it's civil movements, whether it's political parties, whether it's us as individual citizens, it is to understand that India is a very very complex country and if we want to engage and articulate our own problems, we have to bring back the virtues of complexity and nuance into our public discourse. We have to doggedly speak a language of inspiration so that we create a climate for each other to, to, you know, to act to the best of ourselves rather than to create uh, you know, such adversarial positions where we uh, corner each other and we, we bring out the worst in each other. It is important that the tonality of our national discourse changes. It is very difficult to say all of this while news of corruption just unrolls around us all the time. It seems as if the deficiencies of the Anna movement are almost immaterial in the face of the corruption that, that you know, we are confronted on a daily basis. 
But we must remember that democracies are dialogic processes. It takes time. If we can take our learnings from this and build the next pressure movement with a little more wisdom and sagacity, it would have been a worthwhile learning experience. Thanks so much for listening in.